Well, look at that. It's Charlie Brown's Christmas tree right out here in my little section of woods. Hello and welcome to the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen. I'm Matt Mercer, instructor for the Pathfinder School and the founder of the Black Cat Bushcraft Channel right here on YouTube. And if you're watching this video on release day, today is Christmas Eve. And I want to especially wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. I hope you guys will have a wonderful holiday of peace and enjoyment with your family and friends, those that are dear to you. And for you today, I have a delicious recipe that is perfect for the season. This one is called Christmas Hot Cocoa. And of course, it was submitted to us by one of our subscribers. And so congratulations, Rob Gentile. You will be receiving a package from Self-Reliance Outfitters with all of the Pathfinder outdoor cooking gear that I used to prepare this today. So there's quite a few ingredients in this Christmas hot cocoa recipe that I'm gonna prepare for you today. And a lot of the ingredients are pretty rich, so I think this is gonna be a delicious recipe and I'm excited to try it. Of course, those of you guys that go out in the woods often know there's nothing better than sitting around a warm campfire on a cold winter's camp, sipping that mug of hot cocos, just something special and comforting about that. So let's go ahead and get started putting this one together and hopefully you'll enjoy this recipe. Alright, so here you can see all of our main ingredients that will be going into this Christmas hot cocoa recipe. As you can see, it's quite a few different ingredients that go into this, so I believe that's going to account for a very rich cup of hot chocolate, and that will be very appropriate and fitting for this season here at Christmas and in this cold weather. I'm excited for this. I believe it's going to be delicious, and I'm looking forward to putting this one together. So it's been raining about three days straight out here, so these mini infernos and this HD6 ferro rod will make a great combo to get a fire going, even in these wet conditions. so while my fire is getting established I'm going to go ahead and mix up the main ingredients for this hot cocoa and the first step is to empty out this can of sweetened condensed milk this is a 14 ounce pop top can and the can itself will become my measurement cup to mix all the ingredients this recipe calls for two parts whole milk one part sweetened condensed milk one part uh, evaporated milk and one part heavy whipping cream so I'm going to add one can of this two cans of milk and one can of each of those other ingredients this is a pop top can that makes it nice so i'm just going to pop the top here and open that stuff up and man that is some good stuff i love that milk can't help but to lick the, the lid off of it so i'm using the 120 ounce bush pot i'm just going to empty this stuff down here into that that might take a little work because this stuff is thick and sticky I have with me the stainless steel Pathfinder spork, so I'll just use that. 
and I'm not going to worry about cleaning the can out too well because the other ingredients will help rinse that out and get whatever's left of this in the pot as well. Now I'm going to add two cans of whole milk. Feel that right to the rim. It's one and two. Now I'm going to add one part heavy whipping cream. I'm going to be using this heavy whipping cream for another step in this process too. So we'll do that in just a little bit. As you can see, this is going to be a rich recipe with all of these ingredients that I'm adding. And now we'll add one part evaporated milk. Once again, I'll just fill up this can. And add that into the mix. And so now I'm going to use my stainless steel spork to mix all this stuff together. And then we'll just need to hang this on the tripod over our fire, get this mixture hot. And then we can add in our dry cocoa powder and help complete our hot chocolate recipe. So I just hang the bush pot here over this toggle. Now I'm going to need to drop this tripod down a good bit. Alright, so while I'm waiting for all of my milk to get hot over the fire, I'm going to try something that I'm not sure has ever been done in a Pathfinder bottle. This is the stainless steel 32 ounce bottle. And what I'm going to do is add a half a cup of heavy whipping cream to the bottle. And I did bring a measuring cup just to be precise today. I don't always, I normally eyeball things as you guys have often seen me do. All right, one more. With that, I'm gonna add in just a small teaspoon of sugar. I actually have one of my hand-carved teaspoons here. And to my cream and sugar mixture, I'm gonna add just a dab of vanilla extract. Right now, what I'm gonna do is recap my bottle. And for about three to five minutes, I just have to shake. Yep, three to five minutes is gonna last a long time. But if all goes well, we'll have whipped cream to go on top of our hot chocolate. So in all reality, it really only took about three minutes of shaking this heavy cream. And at that point, I noticed that there's no movement. And that lets you know that this is done. And if I open it up, you'll see just inside the lid here, kind of looks like Cool Whip. And that's basically what we have. I have a spatula here, and I'm gonna stick that down in. You can see what we got. It's basically the same thing as Cool Whip or whipped cream. And, mmm. Always got to sample that stuff. It's got a good vanilla flavor, a little bit sweet from the sugar. Mmm. All right, so I've just checked my pot and my milk mixture is definitely hot at this point. And so now I'm going to mix in one quarter cup of dry cocoa powder. And I'm using this Ghirardelli 100% cocoa. This stuff is pretty stout. Again, I'm going to put a quarter cup of this stuff into the pot. And this stuff can be a pain to mix in. I know that from previous cocoa recipes that I've made. But once the milk is warm, it definitely helps. So you always want to wait until the milk is hot to put this stuff into any cocoa mix that you're making. And I'm also going to add one quarter cup of white sugar. That looks good. All right, now I'm going to mix all that stuff in. All right, so while our hot chocolate is still keeping warm over the fire, I'm gonna process down this Ghirardelli chocolate here. 
and I'm not going to use the whole bar by any means. I think it's more than enough just to use a little bit. This is just a couple of squares of this chocolate. I'm going to just kind of break it up with my knife. That'll help it melt down better in the pot. And of course, as always, got to sample it. All right, so I got my chocolate processed up here. And I'm just going to add that into the pot. Let that stuff start to melt down as well. Now, the last ingredient that this recipe calls for to go into the pot is this Juan Valdez instant coffee mix. And I just have my coffee spoon here. I'm not going to add too much. It calls for a teaspoon. This is slightly more than a teaspoon, so we'll add that into the pot. Mix that in good. So it looks like everything's melted together in here oh my goodness that stuff is so rich it is delicious can't wait to serve this up it's almost time so to go with a nice rich cup of christmas hot chocolate nothing could be better than a traditional german stolen bread so i brought this with me today to enjoy right out here in the woods this one is apple stolen delicious all right so I've taken my pot off the fire everything's still really hot and the recipe calls for just a dash of cinnamon if you like that so I'm gonna add in a little bit of cinnamon cuz I love cinnamon I'm just gonna add that in and we'll mix that up in just a second and it also calls for just a dash of pink Himalayan sea salt and I'm going to go very light on that but just a dab of that salt might help balance out some of the sweetness so just a tiny little bit of that and I'm going to stir that in really good and it's going to be time to enjoy this delicious Christmas hot chocolate all right so we're ready to serve this stuff up I'm going to make sure that the lid is on really tight on my bush pot That is just beautiful. And at this point, I have my whipped cream. Add that right on top. And that is just beautiful. Mm, that cream is good. Alright, so it's finally time to give this Christmas hot cocoa the official taste test. That is unbelievable. And I know, of course you guys expect me to say that because whenever I come out and cook it's always good to me. That pinch of salt really just brought it all together. You've got all that sweetness from the evaporated milk and the chocolate and the sugar and all that stuff. And that little bit of saltiness just pulls it all together. That bit of whipped cream on top, oh man, that is so good. Yeah, this is definitely a do-again recipe. It's a complex recipe with a lot of ingredients, but man, is it well worth it when it comes time to drink this hot cup of cocoa. Of course, I gotta have a little bit of this stolen bread. So traditional German holiday bread, from what I understand. I've always loved this stuff ever since I was a little kid. The truth be told, I'm a little bit embarrassed to eat this in front of you guys on camera. You know, because it's stolen and all. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. Mm. So, truth be told, drinking this rich hot chocolate and eating that stolen bread, it really does put me in the Christmas spirit. 
Yeah, that's more like it. Mm. So on a serious note, I did want to come out today and prepare this recipe, share it with you guys as it's an excellent Christmas recipe. Obviously, it was titled for us Christmas Hot Chocolate and so seems very appropriate for the season. I hope you guys will get a chance to try this one, whether it's at home in the kitchen or out in your favorite camp, but really good one. And once again, thank you, Rob, for submitting this to us. I did want to send out once again a heartfelt, very Merry Christmas to you and to your family and from myself on behalf of Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen and from all of the crew at Self-Reliance Outfitters, we just thank you guys so much for your support, for your time and tuning in to these videos and for your support of Self-Reliance Outfitters because without you guys, none of this would be possible. So we thank you. We look forward to 2022, raising the bar, continuing to offer new products. And of course, I'm gonna to continue to get out here and test those products and share with you ideas on how you can better enjoy your time in the woods and eat well in the woods also. So again, from all of us here at Self-Reliance Outfitters, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. You guys be safe, take care, and I'll see you on the next one very soon.